Welcome to the Lou Catino Show, where we can learn to reimagine our lifestyle. Doctor, it's a pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure. Thank it's a pleasure. You. Welcome to Reimagine Your Lifestyle. Where Thank you. The show is really about getting, I mean, you're an expert beyond an expert. And, you know, I don't know how to do justice to your introduction. Of course, I mean, you've received, you've treated prime ministers, chief ministers, you've saved lives of people, 28,000 plus surgeries, 99.8% success rate in bypass surgeries. I mean, it's impressive. And the whole reason we do this show is because the audience out there today is confused. Yes, There's I too agree. much of information, too much of content. And, you know, while we can read books and we can read other people's opinions, here we have an expert who's opening up hearts all the time and can relate it to everything that's going wrong. So thank you for helping us reimagine our lifestyle today. I would love for you to share your journey. You know, I know you so, came from a farmer family to, to be, you know, treating prime ministers and people around the world today. Please take us through your journey. Thank you. First, I'd like to really thank you for you know, inviting me to this show. And the, your show, what it uh, shows to people, is in my heart. I know about it. It's not about just one form of treatment or one particular lifestyle. It is how you need to lead your whole life in a holistic way. That's the only way you can have a healthy life. Or if you have a disease or something, you can have a better results from whatever treatment etc. you are doing. And having said that, Yes, I grew up in a small village, very remote part, and uh, the uh, I used to walk seven kilometers each way, 14 kilometers just to go to school. The reason is there is a school nearby, but it is not good. That was better school. Mm -hmm. They didn't have boarding facility except during exam time. So I decided I'd rather walk and get a better school than this one. And we did that, and during and also I saw during that time how the doctor in the village because that entire. Uh, eight, ten kilometers radius, there's only one doctor, government uh, dispensary. And I saw how the doctors treated them. My own family member, my uncle was an ENT surgeon, very, he retired as a chief of medical services from the armed forces of India. She was kind of role model and that's how the child, I wanted to become a doctor. Then one life-changing event happened during my 10th year, 10th uh, class where the first heart transplant took place. And you could see that time, it was akin just a year later, similar to when this moon landing was happening. This, this was the first heart transplant was a, only about heart and entire newspaper front page was covered to the extent uh, the next year when the second heart transplant happened, the first heart transplant in USA or second worldwide, the surgeon was profiled in Life magazine. If those days Life was the, you know, one of the uh, most uh, red magazine and that's how I got an interest that I, I want to become a doctor and I want to become a heart surgeon. As a child thinking of that actually doing is a very big difference. So then I didn't want to do anything. I was a topper in the class but I didn't want to do anything other than medicine. And once once I got into medicine on the third year we start getting our clinical posting where you go to the clinical area. The first thing I did, I said I want to go to cardiac surgery. Of course it was primitive those very very primitive cardiac surgery but again I got posted and I said, this is my life. I don't want to lead anything. So then I did my MBA, then did my postgraduate in All India Institute. Post completing that, I um, started looking into the best places in earth. I was very lucky to get into Cleveland Clinic, which was that time, even now, so for 35 years in a row, it is rated the best heart hospital in USA. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where I went there and the journey took me from there. And then a Padma Bhushan, how did that make you feel? Thus I tell, every day I feel that um, like a child, that I'm trying to do a heart surgery for the first time. Mm -hmm. And still that child's enthusiasm in there inside, trying to learn something, trying to do better. And heart surgery is there in my every cell. No, what I like is you had a purpose, right? You knew yeah. in the 10th grade what you wanted to do. Yes. And you just followed your vision and you made it happen for you. But doctor, you know, I've noticed you, you've just come out of surgery straight yeah. for this podcast. Yes. Yet you've only been smiling. You've only been energetic. You know, I want to talk about your attitude and how important it is today for humans to realize the importance of an attitude when it comes to human health. Because we know the correlation of stress and yeah. anger and, you know, you know, there's so much a struggle in the world today. Yeah. But like, I'm just noticing one thing. Since you've come out of surgery, right up till now, you've just been smiling. You, oh, it yeah, doesn't you, look like you've done no, a surgery as you well. See, you see, at 2 o'clock, you find the same The reason I say that, always I tell all my team members, my hospital staff, that 
whatever you want to do, do it from a heart. Mm. You don't like it, change. Yeah. I go give a lot of talks to all these uh, medical colleges at other places. I said that if your parents have pushed you to do medicine, don't do it. Mm. If it's not in your heart, don't do it. Uh, I mentor a lot of uh, young medical graduates, uh, undergraduates. Always tell, don't get fascinated by a particular specialty by some glamorous surgeon like me or somebody. Think what you really like to do and follow that like a passion, that day in, day out. So for me, it is a passion. So I really enjoy, I tell everybody, I advise also everybody who is listening to the podcast, look at your heart, think what you want to really do in life, find a purpose in life. Mm-hmm. And pursue that purpose day in, day out, you will never feel tired. If you are getting pressurized by peers, society, parents to do certain things which you don't want to, don't do it. Change. Life is never late to change. I give an example of one. Um, um, if you look at the founder of uh, this one, uh, Orbin Netralai, it was founded by a gynecologist. And he started the hospital after retiring because he developed um, rheumatoid arthritis. He could not, his hand fingers were so much deformed, he could not. Uh, this is one of the pioneering all time great eye surgeons in the country. Mm-hmm. And Arvind Netralay today is considered one of the best in the world, pioneering uh, eye hospital for developing nations. He started this hospital at the age of 60. So age is no bar. At any point of life, you think that what you are leading is not good. You want to do something else that you really going to enjoy, do it. Then all your stress are set will go away. Yeah, I agree with you because yeah. today there are a lot of people talking about you know, all these ways to live longer and be happy. But having that purpose, I think, and that purpose and passion is what keeps us going. So, Doctor, I wanted to talk to you about the fact that, you know, from the time you opened the first body and you've done your first heart surgery till now, almost 28, 29,000 patients, you know, gone through. What do you see? 30,000 will be 30,000, yeah. Yeah. What do you see? You know, when I say, what do you see when you're looking at the hearts that you're doing bypass? Like, what are you seeing? Are you seeing poor lifestyle? Are you seeing stress? Are you seeing poor nutrition habits? You know, you know, what do you see as a surgeon today? I think it's a combination of everything. Combination. Of absolutely. absolutely. Mm-hmm. One is, we are realized in one generation. In my medical college, we are taught by, by professors that heart disease is a problem with Westerners, not Indian. Mm-hmm. In one generation, from that situation, we have gone to a situation today, we are the heart disease capital in the world. And the Indians have two to three or four times more risk of developing heart disease. It has happened in a span of 40, 50 years, I've seen. It's purely related to the lifestyle we are leading. Mm-hmm. Everything. It's a holistic everything. It is whether it is um, food habits, whether it is lack of exercise, whether it is stress. Now we have realized last few years the importance of sleep, sleeping adequately, sleeping properly in time, and stress. Most important, how you lead your life. And the stress, you see, life is full of stress. At some point or other in your life, you are going to get stressed. True. The question is, leading the life internally all the time. Mm-hmm. All these things play a role. When I see the heart, just now, just now today, I just consulted. His father had operated five years back. Father is 62. The boy is 38 year old. He has a severe bad blockage. He's admitted to the hospital. I told the parents, he's 118 kilo. Mm-hmm. He's, five, he's 5 feet 10, he's 100. He should have been 75 kilo. Yeah. So it is, a, it is in his case, it's genetic. Then his lifestyle, and I'm almost certain his stress, everything has played a role. Mm-hmm. When I see a heart in operation theater, I see interplay of everything. Okay. Till 15, 20 years back, modern medicine never taught us that. This is a disease, you do treatment, you do surgery, do angioplasty, do medicine, cure it. Now we realize that it is an interplay of so many factors to lead a <coughs> healthy life, also interplay of so many factors that leads to a disease. When I say heart disease, yeah, I <coughs> see it as interplay of everything, not just one thing that mm-hmm. has caused. No, I, I love that you keep using the word holistic because that's what yeah. we also yeah. see. You know, today yes. we see people who are, okay, they're eating organic food, they're growing food in their farm, they're working out, but they're sleeping two hours. Yeah, yeah. And then they're stressed out because Absolutely. you have less energy. Yes. And yes. it just, you know, it's the, the whole puzzle is broken. Absolutely. You have to put Absolutely. the pieces. You need back. to do everything. Right. Everything. And that's why I always I say, number one, you do exercise. Number two, do anything to reduce stress. Hmm. Number three, look at the diet, lead a healthy diet. Number four, sleep. Mm-hmm. At least eight hours of sleep, try to sleep depending on your body circuit, but by and large, try to sleep before 10, 10 in the evening. Yeah. 
in the night rather. Yeah, no, that's yeah. great advice yeah. because the, the most valuable hours for sleep are actually the two hours before midnight yes. and the two hours after midnight. And yeah. we can see that. Sometimes yeah. we have patients who are coming in for cardiac rehab only by shifting their sleep cycle. Yes. Some yeah. are saying, you know, we sleep at two in the morning, but we mm. wake up at 10. Yeah. But when you make them sleep at 10 and wake, wake up eight hours later, there's a huge change in huge their inflammatory effect. level. Absolutely. I tell all my patients, it's not a number of hours alone. Yeah. It's also what time you sleep. sleep. The same sleeping at eight or nine or 10 has a much better beneficial effect than uh, sleeping before. If you look at human evolution, as we, two, only two lakh uh, uh, years before mm -hmm. that, we were monkeys. Uh, and yeah. in only 30,000 years we started farming, mm -hmm. two, three hundred years light came. Otherwise, throughout human, our development, you know, uh, biological development, you see, all of us used to sleep by sunset, sunrise. Yeah. As a sunset. Go to sleep the moment dark because you don't know. Till 30,000 years we used to live on the treetop because somebody is going to come and eat you. And even when we started living in communes, communes agriculture as started in 30,000 years back, we lived in whatever, whether caves or anywhere or in homes, we used to sleep at 7. The moment you become dark, you sleep. You get up the moment you become light. light. So, body is used to that. Yeah. So, sleeping at 2 in the night and getting up 10, it is as harmful as sleeping for 5, 6 hours a day. No, absolutely. And yeah. I, I know you're passionate about wildlife. We're going to talk about that. But I was doing a project with the tribes of the Maasai Mara. We were trying to understand what's changed in their lifestyle because yes. they just recorded their first few cases of cancer yes. and heart yes. disease, which they yes. never had before. In fact, they didn't have a single case of COVID. Yes. And what we started seeing is the introduction of the fawn into the tribe. Because like yes. you rightly said, yes. once yes. the sun set, yes. they would light a fire, cook, Yes. Sing and sleep. There was nothing else to do. Absolutely. But today Absolutely. that whole cycle has now moved more and more because yes. people have access to the world on a phone. Yeah. And we're seeing how lifestyle habit changes has brought disease yes. into the Maasai tribe. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, th there's a favorite place I go. One of the guides at the age of uh, 46 has a heart problem, has a blockage. Mm. And they'll never see that. Yeah. I can see his obese, his smokes, his, you know. You can see all the lifestyle that they brought in. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So I is, very, very, very strongly believe in a holistic approach. Yeah. No, Not, thank you for saying yeah, that, doctor, yeah. because I really believe, I mean, we've shared common patients who have come to us post your bypass surgeries and yes. stuff, and they've come wanting to make a lifestyle change because Absolutely. I do believe you've told them that, hey, listen, it's not just the bypass. You have to go back and live a Absolutely. better life. Absolutely. And we see them coming and uh, we really appreciate that holistic view that everyone's taking today. You know, when you talk about your happiness, your ab ability to be energetic, I know you have a hobby which now became a passion, which is wildlife. Yes. I would love for you to talk about that and also why it's so important for people to develop or find a passion or a hobby. Because like you said, there is going to be stress in everyone's life. Absolutely. But it's these things that anchor, which yes. balance it. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'll just have one line which I tell all my patients. I said, don't get scared that life ends with being diagnosed with heart disease. Mm. You can start a new life after you have been diagnosed or treated with heart disease because you still can need a completely productive and normal life even after having a disease right. by have, leading a complete holistic lifestyle. Right. Now that is where I am coming to that. How hobbies or do something, any purpose, find a purpose in life. That purpose could be a hobby like wildlife photography, uh, developing music or also as much as doing some social work that work. you love. You yes. go and uh, on my weekend sometimes because I love uh, children, so I go and uh, do a little bit of charity for the slum children. I go to their schools, give them free food, interact with them, do anything that brings you pleasure. But it has to be internal. It has to come from inside. You must love what you are doing, not for the sake of that, yes, I want to do this so that I become happy. It doesn't happen that way. Right. Other than be happy and do whatever you want to do, it's going to bring a lot of happiness to that. And find a purpose. Always I tell people, find a purpose in life. Yeah, no, I agree with you because, you know, we have so many cancer patients and Absolutely. sometimes Absolutely. they're, of course, fearful of death because there's a whole misconception that cancer yes. is a death sentence, which yes. we know it isn't. Yeah, there absolutely. are treatments, absolutely. Absolutely. but we see the patients who have a purpose. Like, yes. for example, a week ago, we got a young mother, 32 years old, with a triple negative breast cancer, which is an aggressive breast cancer yeah. with three children. So what she just came in and said, I need to live because I have three children. Yes. And that was enough of purpose yes. to keep absolutely, her motivated absolutely. through. Yes. But some people, you know, when they don't have that purpose, the disease consumes them. 
because yeah. they are only looking at oh no am i going to live am i going to die so i completely understand not what you mean not only that even physiologically if you have a very positive attitude if you have a purpose in life you have a strong belief in yourself those things also significantly improves your immune system in the body right and that to fight in disease people it has been people seen people who had a very strong attitude very strong positive will power they fight get do much better even cancer or any other disease than people who do not have a positive attitude absolutely we see that every yeah. day yeah yeah doctor you spoke about genetics right yeah. and now we have this new subject called epigenetics where we're also seeing even if there is a strong history of diabetes in the family or heart but if the person you know if let's say there's a strong history parents and grandparents yeah. Yeah. but the children as they grow up into adults if they really invest in their lifestyle changes the genes don't always have to they have to be careful yeah but is it really true that lifestyle and environment can impact up regulate down regulate genes oh yeah, absolutely what is see if you look at it human evolution how the genes have developed it's always some part of the a person's experience gets encoded to the gene gets transferred to the gene that's like that that's how the human evolve, evolve, development takes place so the disease is no different yeah. so even if it is genetic if you do everything good i very 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 strongly believe at this reason i use the word three times very to at least pass on that message to the audience that you can change no i think absolutely i, I want to emphasize on what you just said Yeah. you know because we have so many people who come and say hey i'm going to get a heart attack because yeah. my parents had it or diabetes and yes you should do your regular checkups whatever your cardiologist tell you to do but you have to believe that even a change in lifestyle can actually prevent that everything diet exercise reduction of stress uh, eating in time sleeping all these things yeah. and always trying to take a positive attitude in life and keeping as much happy and healthy as possible all these things plays very significant role in no matter whatever you inherited from your parents you know doctor you or you are get diagnosed also yeah. same thing i've seen day in day out people with a positive attitude they just go flying to the hospital i'm the one who gets very scared by a patient who thinks i'm going to die mhm i've said that i'll give one example one lady we operated and i was standing that there. there's nothing wrong with the patient we just transport from the operation theater one of the very rare patient who died we are just standing there myself by anesthetist by in- intensivist the patient wakes up and she goes like a, like this and heart stops mm-hmm. we tried to do everything there's nothing wrong with the patient post surgery and we we did everything could not uh, salvage after that when it counsel the family granddaughter was a medical student she had the biggest mistake my grandmother said you don't take me to the hospital i'll die in the hospital bed wow did, i said if you had told me earlier i would not have operated no see the person who yeah. thinks that is not going to come out of hospital something other happened because it's not only yeah. it's your own body that you know interacts various ways so it's other around also to lead a healthy life you also need to have that same positive attitude do it then you will not have problem i Even love the problem also you is going to get cured or and at least delay yeah. i love what you're saying doctor because you just explained the placebo and the nocebo absolutely and we see that almost in fact it's increasing of late i don't think there's a day when i don't have a cancer patient who comes in and they always know what questions i'm going to ask first you know i mean you seen the pets mris that's a side i'm going to yes, start yeah. getting into their lives and absolutely. people are today look i think i manifested my cancer and when i say what do you mean He said, "I've always been so scared. I don't want to get cancer. I don't want to get cancer. Oh no! If I eat this, I'll get cancer. Oh no! This person got cancer. I'm going to get cancer." And without even us explaining to them what you said, the yes. nocebo effect. Yes. People are starting to realize the power of their yes. words, negative yes. words, negative Absolutely. thought processes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Thank you for Absolutely. explaining that, doctor. Yeah, so exactly. I'm a fan of the subject angiogenesis. you know so it's always been you know one of my favorite subjects in anatomy because you know when you're looking at tumors it's over angiogenesis so we'll be studying foods that have an anti angiogenic process now in the case of blockages and in case of cardiac arrests we know that angiogenesis is compromised and you know the heart can't you know build sufficient blood vessels to function i would love your take on angiogenesis in relation to lifestyle because what we're learning today like you rightly said the circadian rhythm of sleep Yes. is also impacting angiogenesis people sleeping at different timings 
people waking up at different timings every day. Once in a way, you have a late night, yeah, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. I would love your take on, you know, from a, from a cardiologist's point of view on angiogenesis and the importance of everything. You know, how can we improve our blood vessel strength and health? One, again, I'll go back to basics. Number one, exercise. Agree, yes. You do exercise, uh, that's what helps you. Number two, again, reduction of stress. Mm -hmm. Number three, again, sleeping in time because you are allow the body to repair and rebuild itself. Right. Every single one plays a role. A role. And uh, if you see many, especially if you see people who are lead a very active uh, physical lifestyle, you find that the, the, the collaterals, the, the new blood vessel formation, are growing, yeah. way, way better than people have very sedentary habits. Mm -hmm. That's the reason also you see as you age, especially younger patients, somebody 20s or 30s getting a heart attack. That's why the complications after heart attack is much higher in younger patients than older patients. Because older patients, there is enough time for angiogenesis to develop, collaterals to develop, so that when these arteries get blocked, they don't get a heart attack. Mm -hmm. if, that, if at all they get a heart attack, it is milder. That's also one of the reason. Also, if you find Indian patients, mm -hmm. also they, the complications after a heart disease is much more in Indian patient than Western population because Western Why's population, yeah. they, if I see in USA and Europe, if you see it's a very active physical lifestyle. Yes, true. If you see yeah. sports is part of culture. Mm -hmm. There's not a single student in the school who doesn't actively participate in one form of sports. And especially in India today, it is no more sports. It's a mobile thing, everybody is there and, or, you know, on yeah. social media, other, you know, uh, modalities. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it plays a very big role and especially in Indian patient, we see the development of the collaterals, as you said, angiogenesis, mm -hmm. uh, is again one of the very significant part. You develop those things, then obviously, if at all, uh, unlucky, you get a heart disease, at least the complication rate, etc., will be much less. Right. Doctor, you're fit, you're energetic after a surgery, you work late. Take me through your lifestyle. I would love to know about, you know, what do you eat, your exercise regimen. You know, I would love to know about, we know what you do for emotional wellness. You have a positive yeah. attitude, you have yeah. passion, you have purpose. But take me through your lifestyle, please. I do everything good what I say, except that I don't get time to sleep. sleep. That's the only thing. Yes. My average time starts around, uh, I'm not a very early morning person. Mm -hmm. but because. Not because I used to be early morning, but because the workload takes me uh, late, so I am not able to do, still I have tried to adjust. So I used to get up at 6, but now it is 7, 8, depends. But I made it point last few years that to sleep at least 8 hours, mm -hmm. since this importance of sleep came out. I get up, first one hour, I close everything. No mobile, nothing, one hour, half an hour, at least exercise, half an hour yoga. That's mm -hmm. what I start my day. Okay. And I don't take any phone calls. And my food is very, very frugal in the sense I eat everything. Mm -hmm. But I always say that you try to eat a balanced diet, number one. And there's so much fat, you would eat this, don't eat that, eat that. Yeah. I mean, people say I'm a vegetarian better, but if you look at it, 80% of my patients are the vegetarians. Yeah. So it's not vegetarian food, it's the type of food you eat. Yeah. And lifestyle. 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 So yeah. I, I'm very frugal in my eating. I make sure that I eat, my food contains a lot of fruits, vegetables, and salad, etc. And during a day, I hardly eat. Mm. I last five, seven years, I do intermittent fasting. I eat one two meals a day. Mm. And then my OPD, I said that continues till uh, 9, 10, sometimes 11. Mm -hmm. And of course, last few years, I've incorporated a uh, Kerala massage. Kerala massage. So, nice. a uh, guy comes at 10, 11 in the night, I get a nice massage, they go to sleep. So that must be helping you go into a deep sleep. Going to sleep. Yeah. The other one also, I also very strongly believe in yoga. Very, very strongly, I'll put it. Not to word very, but very, very strongly believe in that. I've seen this, uh, I've been practicing for 20 years, but more uh, intensively for the last 5, 7 years. I've seen the difference in getting good sleep and keeping stress level low. Mm -hmm. Or if I don't get stressed, getting down with a very fraction of a second. I can just get stressed out in one second, I'll be smiling and talking. I, that kind of things I have seen that. And also that helps you in uh, improving your immune system, everything. True. I very, very strongly believe. Yeah. I'll recommend everybody to practice yoga. So you do in your asanas everything. and you do your pranayam as well. Both, both, both. both. Do you meditate as well? Yeah. After? You yeah. do your meditation as well. Yeah. Okay. Usually I do that meditation, there's something else, uh, your uh, yoga nidra. You do it. Yoga nidra. Yeah, yes. I do it and by the time 15 minutes I'll be sleeping. Sleeping, yeah. yeah. 
that's perfect. I just love your holistic approach, Doctor. Yeah, really, yeah. it's so so refreshing to hear everything you're saying. I wanted to also discuss, you know, the point of people who went through the long COVID and, you know, bodies are fatigued, mitochondrial dysfunction, yeah, yeah. jumping too quickly into workouts and then having, you know, cardiac arrests and stuff. What's your advice to people who are still going through long COVID, the symptoms, are there any checkups you recommend? Of course, one advice is don't get into intensive workouts. But what's your experience in handling or seeing these cases? Patients frequently. I will just did a um, study of all the OPD patients who come mm -hmm. who had history of COVID. You'll be surprised more than 95% patient had COVID. Wow. So the point is almost everybody in India had COVID, mm -hmm. whether symptomatic or asymptomatic. Mm -hmm. The question is the this long COVID symptoms and a very selected number of people. Mm -hmm. So one is COVID obviously has a very long recovery process compared to all other pandemics or the seasonal flu, etc., etc. Now people have to have a very uh, whatever we discuss that holistic lifestyle during the recovery time. Mm -hmm. Those who have done that got adequate sleep, exercise, yeah. uh, etc., uh, food habits. Their symptoms are less, they are not getting. These are the people who are leading a very unhealthy lifestyle before, during and after the ones who are getting True, there. we are seeing that too. I very, very strong will. I am not seeing a single pace, person who has led a holistic lifestyle before, during, after has long COVID symptom. Now, these are all again, long COVID is nothing but a marker of the inflammatory process going on inside the body. Mm -hmm. And the inflammatory process is going on because we are not get, allowing the body to take rest, rest. in whatever yeah. form, whether it's stress or sleep or exercise, everything. So it's a very small number of patients and by and large this thing especially related to heart attack and it occurs in the duration of recovery when the inflammatory markers are high in the body. Mm. Once they come back to normal, my experience has not been that people who have got additional heart attack because of COVID. Except that a lot of patients, especially Indian patients, we have got undiagnosed blockages. Mm. Probably they did not know, they attributed to that or they many times people do overdo exercises. Yeah. Yeah. And I give an example, one of my patients mm. operated, he's a big time builder for Pune and his son was very obese. I said, Baba, why are you doing like this, start taking care? A month later, I get a phone call from father, we are airlifting him because he got a heart attack. What he did is, he went to gym and first day only started spinning at the high speed. Mm. Obviously, when he did the angio, everything was normal, the artery had ruptured because you are doing very high speed exercise. Mm. So, those kind of things, unless somebody does that, chances are very less. Right, right. Yeah. right. So, Doctor, I wanted to ask you now, uh, general advice to people out there. Everyone's confused. They want to start their journey towards great health. Okay, people after a particular age are recommended certain tests, 35-40. What would your advice be to our audience today? Like, you know, you do get your blood test done, you do your lipids, your CBC, over and above that, a stress test, a 2D echo. Like, what would you suggest to people to do today if they want to look at a preventive, you know, way of looking at their heart to just make sure everything is working the right way? Because a lot of people today are running marathons, training yeah. in the gym. Yeah. And that fear is always, am I going to get a heart attack? Now, we don't want that fear to be there because of the nocebo effect. Yeah. But what tests can people do you know, what would you suggest? What would you suggest? I'll, I'll divide the people into two groups. Sure. Those who are leading a very healthy lifestyle, whatever we discussed today, yeah. and do not have any risk factors. When it's risk factor related to heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, smoking, tobacco, usage, strong family history, overweight, high cholesterol, etc. Et yeah. et if you do not have any of the risk factors, leading a very healthy lifestyle and overall a holistic lifestyle, Chances of the person having a heart problem is very minuscule. Mm -hmm. In that case, I'll be liberal in not doing test. Okay. At the most, you can do at the initial stage one screening test mm -hmm. to check it out. And after that, I don't think uh, more than once in five years or something to do the test, you don't okay. need. On the other hand, if the person has a multiple risk factors and a very bad lifestyle. So depending on the risk factors and lifestyle, I'll advise them to do all the whole battery of tests. Having said that, I've seen the change. In 92, when I came back to India, I started practicing 93. Once in a year, I'll see a patient below 30 years of age with heart problem. Today, I see every day. Mm -hmm. Just now, I saw 130, I should say, 38. Yeah. Yesterday, I saw 133. So that, today, 30 years back, I said, okay, after 50 years, do this test. Today, even somebody comes with it. In the teenage, my youngest patient, I operated as a 16-year-old girl. 2025 also, I said, okay, do all these tests. When I say trust test, means 
especially people who do not lead a good lifestyle mm-hmm. or have multiple risk factors, I'll suggest to do at least screening, you must do a cardiac screening, mm-hmm. which should include a, a regular ECG will not show anything, mm-hmm. uh, stress test, and stress test again is very inaccurate, a lot of patients you can get both positive and negative tests. So, go to stress thallium stress echo, which is more accurate. Mm-hmm. And another very easy thing to do is a calcium score. The calcium score yeah, Can you explain indicate, that a little more, please? Pardon? Can you explain that a little more, the calcium yeah. score test? Calcium yeah. score is basically wh- whatever, see, inside the, uh, all the arteries in the body, God has given a lubrication system, just mm-hmm. like your, you have a lubrication in all the equipments, machines, etc. That's called endothelium. Mm-hmm. And that prevents for any damage taking place, anything, anything stick into the blood vessels. With stress, whether it is diabetes, blood pressure, your stress, smoking, tobacco, all any stress, risk factors, what it does is makes this endothelium unhe- unhealthy or damages it. Mm-hmm. When it damages, it heals. Like if you get a cut, you get healed yeah. and the scar is never the same color as the skin. It mm-hmm. is different. The same way when the blood vessel heals, the calcium starts getting deposited. Mm-hmm. So, high calcium is an indicator of how much wear and stress the arteries have undergone inside the body. Mm-hmm. So, in la- indirectly indicates the presence of a blockage mm-hmm. because not only calcium gets deposited, cholesterol also gets deposited through right. calcium. So, that is very important even on younger patients. It is not a 100% foolproof indicator, but it is a very strong indicator. You find a high calcium score, then I like to do more investigations and also try to monitor the patient, tell the patient to monitor more frequently. Right. On the other hand, if everything is all right and you have no diabetes, no blood pressure, no smoking, no tobacco, any such skin, okay, probably once in, depending on age, once in three to five years, one can't do. Right. Otherwise, I'll pre- definitely advise to do more frequently. Again, how frequently will depend on how much uh, one finds uh, the, all this abnormality in the body and how much risk factors are there. It could be three months, six months, one yearly or two yearly. The ideal person will be consult the doctor and take the advice and accordingly plan out. Having said that, again I will repeatedly emphasize what you say, mm-hmm. change lifestyle if you find something abnormal and lead a holistic lifestyle, you can reverse a large part of it. I am a very strong believer in reversal of lot of disease processes in the body. You may not reverse completely. Yeah. You can reverse or arrest the disease process significantly by leading a holistic lifestyle. I love what you speak about the endothelium because one yeah. part of our studies in angiogenesis talks about the vascular endothelium growth factor and today yes, we're realizing yes. there are foods yes. that can actually, well, like once it's scarred, it's scarred. Yes. But you know, foods which are rich in magnesium can help yeah. the elasticity of the blood vessel for more blood to you know yes. pass through. Exercise. Yeah. Exercise improves the elasticity. And food together. Yes. So yes. It's, yeah. it's amazing how these things all connect. No, but thank you for that. That's very, that's very helpful. So, Doctor, I wanted to ask you now, you've spoken about food, lifestyle, all of these things that you speak about. I wanted to ask you personally, if you get stressed, I know you have a positive attitude, all of that. What are your coping mechanisms? Because I want to show the reason why I'm asking you this question is because the level of stress that you would possibly have with, you know, life in your hand and everything else. Today, people have different kinds of stress. Someone's running a bank, someone's running a, you know, all of that stuff. But at the end of the day... You know, stress is stress. It's how yes, we take absolutely. it. How yes. do you, what are your coping mechanisms? You know, is it just your attitude that makes it easy for you to handle it? Or are there days where you really, really feel stressed out? And what are your coping mechanisms? One thing is somewhere I practiced, I learned it, how to cool down very quickly. Mm. My uh, staff knows that at one point I might be very upset at somebody, might be shouting. In one second, I'll be smiling. And that is not a super special smile. Mm. It's genuinely I'll be smiling, I forgot. Because, uh, I try to do the moment you get stressed, I say that particular episode, that for that reason I got stressed out, there is no need to carry it. Mm-hmm. So I learned over time, practiced it, how to on the spot let it go. Mm-hmm. And yoga has helped me a lot. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And with that, all other, other things. And try to take this, something has happened, forget it. Just let go to the next thing. Mm-hmm. You can't change that thing. Right. So you need to, and again, I am giving my personal experience. I am a type A personality. I always a high achiever, I always wanted to do something in life, try to do the best, anything I do. So, I am a very typical type A personality, but I have learned how to completely modulate my life behavior to a completely relaxed way of leading life. Beautiful. So, all this you have learned in your journey of life by just living. And anybody can do it and you have to practice. And yoga helps very, very, you know, 
big way in uh, leading a very stress-free, uh, balanced life. How long is your yoga practice in the morning when you wake up? Usually, how long do you do your yoga? Half an hour. Half an hour. Beautiful. And some yeah. days, if you're stressed, yeah. I do one hour. You do one hour. Yeah. yeah. And even in between also, my staff knows if I'm a little stressed out, yeah. room is closed and 15 minutes, 30 minutes, I do yeah. my uh, yeah. relaxation. What, what I really love about you, you, you know, you're not showing us you need to be in a box. Do only one hour of yoga. Do only. No, you're you're no. finding places to do it. You're doing what suits you according to your mood. You know, you're yeah. flexible. You're adapting. Uh, uh, and same thing, I tell all these uh, executives and CEOs are set up. They come say, we have no time. I show them. Mm. Next door, I have a gym. Mm. And quite often, if I'm running the hospital, my patients are staff are coming, giving a report. I'll be running on a treadmill and doing it. Beautiful. And um, one of our doctor posted, he, had, he was going to all these corporate places to give a talk. I didn't realize during one of the meetings, I recorded my video. Okay. He showed them that you think there is no time, see Dr. Yeah. Panna, he's calling us for a daily patient report while taking report, he's running on a treadmill. So you can, you have to find a balanced and a way how to lead a, you know, uh, physically active lifestyle also. So I got a uh, end of this uh, corridor, uh, OPD block, I got a small little gym. That's and amazing. Quite often I'll be doing meetings uh, running on a treadmill. No, that's amazing. I think I think we get a clear example over here from a very, very busy, successful cardiologist, surgeon, everything together that it's an excuse that most of us give ourselves. You know, I mean, if there's a will, there's a way we will find time, if not one hour, 30 minutes, if not 30 yeah. minutes, 15 minutes. And it's seen that yeah. it doesn't have to be one hour, 35. You do yeah. two minutes also is good. It's good. Two better minutes than better than nothing. Exactly. <laughs> and one day about diet also, I'll tell you, there's so much things about fat, yeah. about diet. I believe in... Every diet is good. God has created it. Yeah. Only thing is the balance of what to eat, mm -hmm. and also and uh, try to do everything in moderation. Yeah. And avoid all the processed food. I'm very very. I don't. All processed food are they produce inflammation in the body. Sure. Try to go back to food that's as natural as possible. Mm -hmm. You want to enjoy once in a week. I, I keep Sunday as my sin day. Mm -hmm. So one day I Sunday lunch I enjoy my food. I can eat on a lady, unhealthy or anything. Yeah. I want to have a little bit of uh, um, to get it out of the system. So course, try yeah. to lead as healthy uh, food as possible. Occasionally, it is not a problem. I try to cut down on the processed food as much as possible and uh, keep it for occasionally just to enjoy. That's what traditional India did, right? Absolutely. We had absolutely. sweets and sugar and stuff yeah. at festivals, but yeah. today every day has become a festival. Every day is some function, yes, some celebration. Yes. And uh, sugar is one of the most dangerous food. Next to tobacco, sugar is the most dangerous <laughs> food for health. I, I'm Our, laughing because it's very rare that, you know, a medical professional says this. So, thank you so much for yes. saying that. Inflammation, right? Yes, inflammation. Yeah. It's one of the most dangerous food for the body. <laughs> Doctor, I think this has been so, so amazing. I love when you mentioned the yeah. statistics because we, we see the same thing. I mean, you know, when I travel the world and we do conferences, people always ask, you're from India, vegetarian, non-vegetarian. And we, we try to make them understand yeah, it's yeah. your attitude towards the Absolutely. food you're eating and moderation because yeah. even most of our cancer patients yeah. are not non-vegetarian. Yeah. They are vegetarian, vegan, pesca. It's, yeah. it's beyond just a diet. Some Absolutely. of them are so stressed about what yeah. they eat yeah. Yeah. that exactly. eating the food itself has it lost so its energy. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. 80% of my patients are vegetarian. They eat the worst form of vegetarian food. Yeah. Heavy carbs, right? Heavy, heavy carbs, heavy. all the saturated fat, yeah. heavy fried food, huge amount of sugar. That's yeah. not vegetarian diet. Right. Huge amount of dairy product. Dairy is not vegetarian. It's a non-vegetarian. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And there are people who are eating all that also need look at the Eskimos. Mm -hmm. They eat only fish. Yeah. They never got a heart problem. Look at uh, Masai Mara we discussed. True. Those people live only on animals. Yeah. They never had a heart problem. Yeah. And I think, you know, I mean, while in while the world's becoming global, yeah. Mediterranean is great for people living in the Mediterranean. Yes. Yes. The Mara diet is great for people living in the Mara because yeah. we adapt ah, that to type of lifestyle. That type of lifestyle, exactly. Absolutely. Indians Absolutely. are best eating Indian food, yeah. but yeah. moderating the carbs, having better quality fats. Like well, there's the whole argument Absolutely. on saturated fats. Of course, yeah. saturated fats today, most of it is factory made, yeah. hydrogenated Absolutely. fat. Absolutely. But the Absolutely. original PO ghee yeah. saturated Absolutely. fats, those are absolutely fine. Yeah. Our, yeah. Our, our forefathers used to do the same thing. Exactly. Well, we just need to follow what our forefathers used to do. My dad uh, passed away in 97, no problem, no blood pressure, no cholesterol, nothing. He will get a half a liter of milk every day, he will drink. Yeah. He will eat so much sugar. 
Yeah. But once by mistake, I'll just give an anecdote. We did both the blood tests together. My pathologist called up, said there is a mix of blood test because my levels are slightly higher than my father. <laughs> he said, no, that's my father. Wow. He was no stress in his life. Mm. He'll do yoga, he'll sleep, sharp at night, get up at nine. You don't get for food, he'll just not say a word, brush and go to sleep. Get up five o'clock. He lived 97, he went in his sleep. No prodigies, nothing. So, doctor, you know, I mean, <clears throat> I'm sure you've had so many sessions where you've educated people on what to do, what not to do. We do that. Today, the world has access to information. Yes. Everyone knows what they should be doing. Yeah. I see the biggest lack in today's world is human behavior, action, Absolutely. Absolutely. you know, motivation, inspiration. Yes. You know, what's your advice to people? I mean, when people know that they shouldn't do something, people want to live long, but yet they want to do the things that come in the way of lifespan. People want to have a healthy heart, but yet they do the things which come in the way of having a healthy heart. You know, with all your years of experience, what do you think we need to change human behavior? What can people do to change that behavior? You know, to do things which are right, which are simple and which are right before it becomes a complicated surgery, before it becomes more money being spent in all diseases, every part of you. What do you think is lacking? Why do humans, most humans not find themselves motivated? I'll tell you that um, very simple story I'll give you. Probably a lot of people know about Mahabharata, lot of death, you know, uh, told something, all the all his uh, four brothers are dead. So, uh, lot of death asked Yudhisthir. One of the questions is, said, tell me, what is the most strangest thing about humans? He <coughs> said, uh, uh, Yudhisthir told, Lord, everybody knows that they're going to die, mm -hmm. but everybody thinks he or she is not going to die. Others are going to die. That's the problem I have seen in uh, mm. dealing with patients day in, day out. Everybody thinks the other person is good. Everybody knows that they, these things will going to lead to disease, but they think it's going to happen to the other person, not going to happen to the person. Mm. And that is something they need to internalize and start changing. Right. And other things, as I told, discuss about finding a purpose, find, try to do yes. something you really love to do. And always I say, you also need to look at, you have a responsibility towards everything. You are responsible to your own health, yeah. you are responsible to your family, responsible to the society, responsible to the country. Mm -hmm. So you need to be very particular about that. You have to be responsible towards yourself. Yeah. If you are not healthy, how are you going to look after your children? Exactly. Our yeah. family. So it is the combination of our, our, you know, that infallible attitude of humans that nothing will happen to me, it will happen only to others. In spite mm -hmm. of knowing that all these things, others are also by not doing or getting the problem. This, wow. this is my long years of experience. Yeah, that's that, that's so beautiful. I mean, we always yeah. see this happening. People yeah. just yeah. don't... I think it starts because when people ask me, you know, what is spirituality to you? I always say yeah. spirituality is first respect for the gift of life. We've been yes. given a gift. Yes, absolutely. If we can't absolutely. respect it, there's yeah. no point yeah. talking about other spirituality. Yeah. First, exactly, exactly. You have a gift, you use it well. You yes. nurture it, you look after it. Now you absolutely. can go deeper into spirituality. Then do the rest things. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I Doctor, I would I love for you to speak about wildlife and your hobby. I mean, it's so beautiful. You you entered this beautiful hospital. This is the second time I came. The, the first time was with Dr. Harish Mehta. We had a common oh, okay. patient over here. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember landing from Singapore, two in the morning, coming over here. Okay. Beautiful yeah. hospital. But as you enter, we see all of your wildlife pictures out okay. there. Yeah. I would love to, you know, how do you get into wildlife? And, you know, you even spoke to me for the next two months. I mean, for the next one year, every two months, you've already booked yeah. the Mara. You, won't, you know where you're going to be. That's yes. your purpose. You're going to be yeah. shooting yeah. fantastic yeah. photography. Talk to us about your hobby, please. Your I passion. always, yeah. yeah. See, in addition to, let not your career consume your life. Mm -hmm. Everybody must find a another second purpose. For my first purpose is become the cardiac surgeon, mm -hmm. uh, saving life. Second purpose is do something else that really I enjoy. Mm -hmm. I tried out everything, but then slowly I had a lot of fascination for wildlife mm -hmm. and nature, basically nature. I grew up in a village, so uh, Odisha was abundant about that. So, and um, slowly I gravitated towards wildlife. My daughter is a, as a child also, she was a passionate wildlife conservationist. So I used to take my children always to all these national parks, etc. So more I saw one part was wildlife. Then I got actively involved. Then I realized that one of the major stakeholders, this wildlife which is there today and thriving is because of the workers. And lot of them are not, they really are extremely committed people and they don't, they uh, uh, they live a uh, subhuman life, mm -hmm. I'll put it. 
I'll not go into detail how that is the amount of money they get or the way they live. They live in a jungle, there is no electricity, no light, no food, nothing. In spite of seeing the amount of enthusiasm with which they are protecting the wildlife. That's why I got very passionately involved, both photography and also doing something for the staff in the, all the national parks. And uh, that is what drives me. That's my second passion in life today. And come alternate weekends, I'm in the forest. Wow. I enjoy, so those two days like my yoga, plus also I look after these people, I see their, understand their problem, try to see what to do. Also the people living around the uh, periphery of the, the buffer zone of the forest, all the tribal center, the children's education, those things, little bit things, yeah. that gives immense joy. The point I'm trying to do, do something that is going to give you immense joy. joy. And every person I see, or person I see after retirement, I say, don't retire. You retire, you will retire from life also very quickly. Yeah. So, yeah. find a second purpose in life mm -hmm. and try to do something. Whether it's charity, go to children's education, get something involved, that is going to give you immense joy. For me, going to a forest, watching at animals, etc., gives immense joy. More I see wildlife that no different, emotions, feeling, etc., no different than human beings. beings. I'll yeah. give an example mm -hmm. around a year back, I had gone to Kana and, um, and everybody was stressed out searching for, uh, I said, what happened? I said, sir, Shivani is missing. Shivani was a 10-year-old elephant okay. and she's missing for two days, they couldn't find her. Then third day, I was there, I said, son, who finally found Shivani. She was with her mother, 20 kilometers away, in a place she has never gone in her life. The reason she went, she had a young brother, four days old. The mother had given birth to a baby four days earlier. Across 20 kilometers, they communicated with each other. Wow. Sivan has never been to that place. It's a legend story. You go to Kana, people talk about it. It happened around three years back. The point I'm trying to do, like animals, I said, like human beings, animals have emotions, feelings. They are no different than us. Right. And they don't have voice mm -hmm. and voting power. So we need to look after that. So that's why I'm that's, so passionate about wildlife. That's beautiful. I want to take something from there. You know, today after like, I mean, you have years of experience, but when I keep reflecting on 13 years of my own personal experience with cancer, that's predominantly what we do and other patients yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, it comes down to, because like you said, there are people fighting about which diet is right, which diet is wrong, which supplement is good, which supplement is wrong. All of that is like, super, it's important, but not everything. Not I at all, not at all. A human yeah. being at the end of the day, if we can yeah. feel good. Yes. You know, that is the driving force for yes. our physiology, bio. I just feel when, when we're in a state of feeling Absolutely. good, even if there's a problem within us, I think the intelligence within us works it out or helps work it out. I don't know. I would love for you to add to that. Yes. If yeah. you see all the studies or uh, they looked at people who have lived longer, yeah. say 95, 100. Mm -hmm. They all are simple, same, same. It comes out same. All of them have led a holistic lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And second thing, we are social animals. So it's very important to have a social connectivity. Connect. Yeah. With the friendships or the neighbors or whatever way, you need to also connect with people, whatever way that brings you pleasure. Everything contributes. Beautiful. Yeah. And you must talk to us about that beautiful initiative. You know, you started that initiative for cancer with Tata Memorial Hospital as well, helping so many people with their treatments and everything so the Konak, else. Uh, yes. Foundation. Yes. yes, I would love for you to talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So I've got yeah. multiple foundations. So one is for wildlife, I've got one for Girl child education, there's one for uh, uh, pediatric uh, patients, uh, heart, uh, children with heart disease, the similar which I'm very close to, Aru Patnag, who has started Konark uh, Cancer Foundation. Mm -hmm. By and large, we help, help out all the people who are coming out, outside Mumbai to, because if you find all these poor guys are sleeping on the road, mm -hmm. etc. So this foundation does help all these people connect, try to uh, get them from the airport or the station, Accommodate, uh, they have tied up with many places. There are a lot of uh, social organizations providing accommodation, mm -hmm. food, then transport, then try to help the dog get an earlier or uh, priority appointment. Beautiful. Somebody sick patient, they are very poor patient, they don't language barrier, other barrier. So we help them out through that. Oh, that's beautiful. Doctor, you're doing so much and there are so many more things that we keep finding about what you've thrown yourself into, so much of service. Like you said, I mean, I love that you walk the talk, you speak about service. And it's not just what you're doing with your patients, it's what you're doing beyond. Beyond that, uh, yeah. anything that uh, I again say, I do, do with love. 
It's yeah. not that I just want to do it. Something I don't like, I just don't, just don't do it. That's it. It doesn't make sense to do it something yeah. that I honestly you don't, like. don't yeah. feel you could have this energy that you have if you were doing it just oh, absolutely, like that. Absolutely. Always I yeah. say, the only time you find me low energy if I'm not doing anything. <laughs> That's very rare, by the way. So, so Doctor, before, yeah. before we end this amazing, amazing discussion, if the whole world was watching you right now, Okay, what advice would you leave them with? It could be anything. It could be about life. It could be about the heart. Whatever you want. What advice would you leave everyone? Number one advice I'll, I'll give, find a purpose in life. That really you love to do. Mm. Second thing I give advice to youngsters, there will be multiple crossroads in life will come. And to get that crossroads, especially young, younger audience, crossroads in life, you take one wrong move, you can go up the ladder, you can go down the ladder. Many things that happened in my life, I was fortunate enough to take the right decisions. And that only comes from language, sorry, uh, learning and guidance. So find mentors, especially youngest, youngsters, read a lot. Mm -hmm. The more knowledge you have, you'll be able to get more, uh, more uh, informed decisions. And when you read, everything you read, take a huge punch of... Uh, Salt, I'll say bowl of salt, because that information you can see, it, let's look at health yeah. of food. So much, this is good, yeah. another person writing good. It's, I always say it is like um, four blind men trying to describe an elephant. We know the story. <laughs> the same way that, you know, that you have to find out, instead of becoming four blind men, get eyesight and see how the elephant looks. Yeah. The elephant is your food, lifestyle, etc., etc. Find a purpose in life, youngsters. Crossroads try to take a good right decision that is only out possible out of knowledge coming for read extensively, get a mentor to help you and uh, do some do anything that you really love. If you don't like to do something, change. change it. No matter what stage in life, you can find something you can do. That enough example of people 60, 65, 70 found a purpose in their life, they're happy. Yeah. And always do something uh, first. Take care of yourself. That's the most important thing. Take care of yourself, then take care of your family, then society and country. And don't retire. Don't retire. Yeah. <laughs> Even after so-called retirement from your profession, do something else. Yeah. So before you retire, have your passion Absolutely. ready Absolutely. so you can get into that. And enjoy it. Yeah. Thank you so much for this amazing conversation. I know I said that was my last question, the advice that you give the world, but you know, it makes me think you're a medical professional who's achieved so much, yet you have all this knowledge in between, you know, on holistic health, on life, philosophy, all of that stuff. Where did that come from? Where did you find time to learn that or read that? I would love to know about that. I'm a voracious reader. Okay. If I extend that, if I'm sitting in the bathroom, also I'm reading something. Okay. Yeah. So one of the things that I just said about life, about a couple of things came uh, one was a beautiful short story by uh, Nobel laureate uh, Ravindana Tagore. In one line he says to his son, one father says, he says, if the costly medicine could save life, why kings and emperors should die? Yeah. The point here is, if it, doctors and medicine are not going to make live anybody longer. It's only people have already got a disease because of lifestyle, etc. Doctors, medicine make them live longer because of the disease. But people who live more than 85, now this is my favorite line to all my patients, I like to tell all your audience. People who live more than 85, 90 or 95, they don't live because of doctors or medicine. They live because the lifestyle, the holistic lifestyle, everything they lead. Right. This is the message I like to give to everybody. And Thank that comes from that. extensive reading and having a very holistic approach to everything in life. Everything in life is not black and white. Absolutely. There's always a lot of grey, you need to look at it, look at everything, try to find a purpose and try to lead a holistic life. And then you live longer and go and live without disease. Beautiful. This is a creation of our own bodies, the mm -hmm. way we lead our life, nothing else. What is disease? It is a defecting mechanism. Whether it is cancer, heart disease, it is a manufacturing defect. Mm -hmm. Body is constantly evolving, every day one cell, you know, gives old, dies, another new cell is produced. You lead a good life, holistic lifestyle, the cells that are regenerated or produced is going to be healthy. Yeah. It's like a factory. Poor maintenance, you are going to put third-rate products. Mm -hmm. Good maintenance, you are going to get a good product, no defect. 
the same thing body this is what i am going to uh, tell your audience <laughs> that is beautiful yes. and doctors and medicine are not going to make you live longer only because you have led a bad lifestyle doctors and medicine are going to make you live a part of the life you have lost mm-hmm. not going to give you the whole life that you have lost but even after the medications or the bypasses yes. you still need to change your yes. lifestyle and yeah. at any point in life again i say by changing your lifestyle leading a holistic lifestyle you can recover a lot of bad health you have got mm. recover a lot of your life also you can lead still a, almost a normal lifestyle beautiful thank you doctor thank you so much my pleasure thank, thank you. you stay tuned for more we're going to continue our journey learning sharing and evolving <laughs>